Did Comet Atlas see 2019 Y4 shatter? Well, I don't know if it shattered, but it certainly broke apart. And NASA shares rare close-up of the comet breaking up. And you can even still see it in the night sky. Now the picture here is from April 14th, and I just recently did a video with some April 13th photos. But in this photo, you can see one major piece still exists here in the front of the coma, and then two, three, maybe four, five, six, maybe more pieces in kind of a, an L shape, like a hockey stick. Imagine that. And this means that it may continue to disintegrate as it gets closer to the sun. But there's good news. And before we get to that, let's just take a look at the trajectory of Comet 2019 Y4 and why it was such a spectacular comet, still is. It's only at a magnitude of about 9.3 and it may still brighten to the visible eye in pieces. But what's most importantly, now that there are pieces and some CMEs have come, come off the sun in the, in the last day, this may get much brighter and it may perturb these pieces. And this is coming very close to Mercury upon its exit. Watch the video and take a look at what I'm saying. Oh. All right. One more time. Take a look at this. Whoa. So what does that mean for us? It means that there could be an, some interesting interaction with the comet or the tail or any pieces of this with the planet Mercury. So we could still be in for a light show, folks. Now, the current position of C2019Y4 uh, at a magnitude of 9.3 is in the Camelopterids. I will leave you links to the Sky Live positioning chart. And Comet Atlas may be crumbling. But another comet is brightening right behind it, and this is Comet Swan. And we talked about this in last night's update. Comet C2020 F8 Swan was just recently discovered, less than a month ago. And here what we're looking at is pictures of Comet Atlas as it disintegrates into the current. Here's four pieces. There's more pieces on the 11th and 12th, and now we're in a big jumble. So clearly it's disintegrating as we go. But Comet Swan is not disintegrating. Currently at an estimated magnitude of 11.2, and we have all the stats here. I'll leave you links to all this. You can find its position right now with respect to the brightest stars, the first order finder chart here. Here is Swan. Here are the surrounding stars. Looks like Aquarius right there, 88 Aquarius. And there's the position of Swan. There's the actual night sky with the right acceleration declination. Distance in kilometers, 177 million kilometers away, 1.1 astronomical units. And then you see this nice inter, uh, interactive chart on Swan down here. If you come down here, you can even get a close up, but you can see. The close approach here is going to happen right here 
Uh, it appears to be May 15th. So May 15th is our close approach to Swan. And then if you look at the magnitude here, it could peak up here. Well, geez. Magnitude 6, which is not very significant. You could barely see that with the naked eye. But if it brightens, well, that could be a fantastic com electric comet. So anything can happen. We don't, I mean, you saw, we just saw a, bit, a gigantic comet break up and now a new comet take its place. Anything is possible. Uh, I'm going to take you over here to the Sky Live Planetarium. If it will come up, there it is. And you can see where Swan is in the planetarium. So I'll leave you links to that. There's the moon. Swan is right below the moon there. So an interesting way to put this here. Here's Mars. And I'll bring you over here to the 3D solar viewer. And you really can get a good view of that. So here's the plane of the ecliptic of the planets. You could see the sun and then Mercury and Venus and Earth and Mars. You could see Swan is coming from quote unquote beneath us. And by May 16th, it's going to have passed through that plane of the ecliptic. So we can walk it through day by day. April 20th, 27th, 8th, 9th, May 2nd, May 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. Right there on May 8th, it hits the ecliptic, and there's nobody near it. So it's passing through the plane of the ecliptic, and there are no planets really near it there. And so I'll just give it a little bit of an angle so we can watch it come out here. There's the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And so Swan escapes the solar system quite nicely with another close approach to the sun here, which could break it up or illuminate it here. Any time during this end of May period, beginning of June, it might be able to break up or illuminate or anything could happen. Anything can happen on this whole route. So we have lots of interesting comets coming, electrical in nature. And when I mean electrical comets, uh, let me bring you back to comet C27K2 pan stars. Last year, this comet, outside of the orbit of Uranus, illuminated, crushing all the hopes and dreams of the dirty snowball comet hypothesis, where these comets get bright because of the sublimation of ice and their proximity to our star. This one lit up in a very cold region of space where there's very little heat from the sun. So clearly the sun is not heating up these dirty snowballs. And we've even recently landed on some comets, and we found out that they're in fact rocky bodies that have no ice on the surface. They're not even made of ice. They're made of rock. So the difference between a comet and an asteroid is comets tend to be electrical in nature and glow or discharge with a plasma, and asteroids do not. They're more neutral. Hope you got something out of the video. Comet Atlas may have broken up. It may have shredded. Where is this shot? There it is. But it may hit Mercury, and the show might be even more amazing. The coming weeks will be fantastic, regardless of what comet we watch. None of these comets will hit Earth. They may affect Earth if they light up, because people will lose their mind. Be safe. That's bow to knowledge. We love you.